preaching. And if you want that Jesus vibe, you gotta subscribe. We are in Venice, California. It's really cool here, and we thought we were gonna do just a, you know, little four day, three day excursion, and it's turned out to be a nine day <laughs> excursion. Ooh, we found the cutest shop. <gasps> Okay, over and out. Howdy, Bible babes. Uh, we just got back from Venice Beach and we did a little retail therapy. Listen, every now and then you gotta do a little retail therapy. Check out this cowboy hat that I just got you guys. It's so, they said it just came in this morning. Can you believe that? And um, I just always have such trouble finding hats that fit my head because my head's really small like a peanut, but this one fit just right. I'm Snow White right now. Oh no, that's Goldilocks. Is that Goldilocks or Snow White? Yeah, I've been thinking a lot about um, the fact that, I, that I'm gonna be an empty nester soon. And I am having a little anxiety about it because I don't really have that many hobbies. I know you guys might be surprised to hear that, but I really don't have that many hobbies. I'm not a hiker, I'm not a biker, I'm not a swimmer, I'm not a jogger, I'm not a painter, I'm not a, what else do people do? I'm not a card player. <laughs> I haven't done that in a while. That would be fun. But yeah, it's on me. Like if, you know, my last child, my third child leaves and goes off to college and I'm just in bed moping, crying, feeling worthless and you know, like I don't have a meaning and purpose in life. That is totally on me. I have got to get out and do things with my life. Who can you blame? You know, kids grow up, kids move on. You want that. It means you did a good job. You know, your kids are going forward in life and living their lives. That's what you want them to do, to get out there and slay. I was talking to a friend and she was like, China, seriously, you have to move forward. If you want to move forward, you can't walk backwards because I was telling her that I was going to, you know, just feel really lonely. You know, even on some level, when the children leave, you feel kind of abandoned. You also feel like, bye, love you, <laughs> you know? I know there are some people who are like, don't let the door hit you in the butt, you know what I mean? And I guess on some level, there's a little bit of that, you know, cause you're done being the chauffeur, you're done being the chef, you're done being the nurse, whatever. But I'm either gonna dissolve or evolve. I lay back. Oh, this hat is not gonna, I'll put it sideways. It's not gonna, <laughs> hey, that's another cute look. Sideways cowboy hat. That could be a new thing that I do. I wanna be one of those people who say things like, a year from now, I wanna look back on this version of who I am and not even recognize myself. You know what I mean? Like those people who are so motivated to just keep growing and evolving and changing and, you know, challenging themselves just haven't been in that place. If I'm being honest, I definitely, definitely have not been in that place the last few years. I think the last time I was in a place like that was probably in 1987. Psalm 37.4. I read it this morning, it says, take desire in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. It's something like that. But guys, how beautiful is that? What is it that I'm missing in my life? I don't know. It's a little bit of a Chinese puzzle, but I'll solve it. I need to get my hands a little dirty. Please pray for me to help me figure out how I can get my little paws dirty and get out there and help somebody. Um, I know it's probably just right outside my front door, my community, do something. God's gonna show me what I need to do. And I'm excited about that. Waiting. In the end, my life is gonna be summed up by what I gave attention to. But the Holy Spirit is ministering to us on a daily basis. I just love the truth, not even the concept, but the truth that the Holy Spirit is ministering to me, to you, in a moment to moment basis. The question is, are we listening? Are we willing to stop? Are we willing to be still? It's not like sometimes when you open the mailbox, it's empty. No, the Holy Spirit always has a message for us in the mailbox. I love mail. Don't you love mail? I love receiving mail. And I like to think of the Holy Spirit, you know, as sending me little messages in the mail all day long. It's just a matter of if I'm opening the mailbox and reading what the Holy Spirit has to say to me, whether that's through the word or just closing my eyes and getting centered and listening to what the Holy Spirit is ministering to me at that moment. The Holy Spirit is literally the greatest minister there ever was and ever will be. He, I people corrected me because I used to say the Holy Spirit, he is ministering to us right now. So I'm gonna go take some time to listen to what the Holy Spirit has to say to me today because I have a lot of, I have that Chinese puzzle that needs to get solved. So off I go.
Opening God's mailbox absolutely positively never happened. Um, I fell asleep <laughs> and it's the next day. Hello. That never happened. I literally went back into the, you could probably tell I was so tired. Went back into the hotel room and freaking crashed, crashed real hard. But I, I've snuck away this morning. Um, I left Brooke at the hotel sleeping because, you know, she's a zombie every morning. And um, she just probably would have slept in anyway. So I was like, I'm out of here. And look where, I'm in the Santa Monica Mountains, you guys. I peeled away to get some nature time in. I'm wearing my little jumpsuit this morning. All my kids tell me that I look like a Laker girl when I wear this and they're really embarrassed. They will not leave the house if I'm wearing this outfit. So today is show day. Wow, guys, check this out, check this out. Look at this beautiful ravine or large brook. I'm not really sure what you would call it. It doesn't have any water running through it, but wow, this is just exquisite. Peace with every step. Did I mention that this is a show for a Disney family member? I'm not really sure if I did, but um, yeah, it is. And she wants us to sing four Wilson Phillips songs and one Disney song. I was like, uh, okay. So we chose When You Wish Upon a Star because let's face it, that's the easiest Disney song that there is. But ask me if I know it. Yeah, no. I'm going to be rehearsing that right now. When you wish upon a star Makes no difference who you are That's all I know. <laughs> Do any of you guys have any ask holes in your life? Okay, I know. I know that was pushing the limits just slightly on this Christian channel. I have a couple ask holes in my life. Now, let me explain to you what that is if you don't already know, because I learned this just a couple months ago. It's when you have a friend who constantly asks you for advice and then they don't take it. They just do the exact opposite of what you advised. Now, I don't really love to give out advice, especially unsolicited advice, but if somebody's gonna take the time to call me and ask me for advice, it's annoying when you spend an hour on the phone with them, talking to them about, you know, what they could possibly do. And then you, you find out the next day or a week later that they absolutely took absolutely zero of your advice and went in the exact opposite direction. That, my friends, is called an ask hole. Okay, just so you know, keep that in your back pocket so you have that information. I realize that the Bible says that Jesus is a sorrowful man acquainted with grief or something like that. I don't, I don't always quote the Bible perfect, but, but I try. But I, God has to have a sense of humor. Jesus has got to have a sense of humor. It's like these people who just so wound up and so uptight. Come on. I mean, you got to have fun in life. You got to have some laughs in life. And sometimes my humor... <laughs> You know, okay, I will admit sometimes it crosses the line slightly. You know, the Christian line. I would say maybe it does. You know, I just haven't been convicted of that completely yet. You know, I know that Paul says not to, to joke harshly or all of that stuff. And, and I get that. And I'm really, I'm willing to explore that. And, you know, I don't say bad words all the time. Like sometimes they fly out, especially in the past few months, the, the bad words have been flying out. I'm not going to lie. They have been flying out like, like a truck driver. And am I proud of it? No. Did it feel good? Yes, yes, it has felt good to curse. Sometimes for me, there is no other word that's going to cut it other than that word, that one word. You know, there's actually two. There's two words and you guys know what they are. Because of all the stress that I've been under, I'm worried that I'm gonna have one of those shows where I'm really in my head and I'm just thinking way too much about what I'm saying or how I'm performing. And I'm just praying in the mighty name of Jesus that that doesn't happen tonight. Listen, I never lose. I either win or I learn period. If the show is a bomb, okay, what did I learn? Because if I beat myself up about stuff, you know, I mean, I know it won't be a complete bomb. I can get into my head. When I'm stressed, I can just, I get like this brain cramp. I've spoken about it before in my videos where I'm just can't like be in the moment. And when you're not in the moment when you're performing, it can be problematic, you know, because you're, you're thinking, what, what's the next line? Or what, you know, what harmony do I sing here? <laughs> it's like scary. It's frightening and you're in front of literally thousands of people that's that's terrifying so yeah I, I am not going to have performance anxiety tonight in Jesus name I am not my doctor has been asking me to do these TMJ exercises every single morning because I don't know about you but I have really bad TMJ sometimes if I'm eating like my jaw gets really really you know, fatigued when I'm chewing so anyway I've been having to do these exercises where I'm pushing really oh oh my gosh you guys ouch 
Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Oh, hey, California preaching. Stop I it. I just ran into a cow preacher. How cute is that? He was like, California preach it. Do you know how much that means to me? Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, he just reminded me, he said, um, one of my uh, favorite things you say on Cal Preach is that you're not sinless, but you sin less. And it's true. I'm definitely not sinless, just like I said. You know, the bad words are flying out of this little mouth. God put a guard at the door of my lips. You know, I'm not usually a person who's into revenge, but I had a moment this week where I got really upset and I was like, well, I'm just gonna... <laughs> Well, I'm just gonna, yeah. Uh, but you know what they say about revenge? They say, if you're planning revenge, dig two graves. Revenge is never good. You know what? God is gonna replace what the locust has eaten and God is going to fight our battles. We do not have to do his work. God knows and it's trusting in our Lord that he is going to set things straight. I know that kind of came out of nowhere, but I just wanted to confess that I was definitely having some vengeful, revengeful thoughts this week. And it's not like me. I suppose I've got to get my Laker butt girl back to the hotel and get ready for this uh, show tonight. It's puppies. I don't think those are puppies. Okay, so I have a joke for you. Um, if you're in London and you're visiting the Loo, what are you doing? European. Yes, I did. Um, looks like Billy's going to Thailand. Yeah. Thailand to do a film. So therefore I might be going to Thailand, which is very interesting. That's one place I've never been in the world. My mom, God bless her, took me all around the world when I was a child, literally all around the world. So I've seen a lot of the world and that's probably why I kind of have very little interest in traveling now because, you know, people who are like, my greatest dream is to travel. It's just not my dream. My dream is to sit poolside at a hotel and be served. <laughs> So makeup is almost done, except I have a few hairs that need to be shaved off immediately. Okay guys, I just want you to know my Patreon is kicking booty, kicking booty. And I say that because I'm putting so much content up. I've got Bible studies, I've got guided meditations, I've got holy notes, I've got true confessions where I'm just talking about what's really going on in my world. Please don't miss out on the extra content. If you are a Cal preacher and you love Cal preach, you might not wanna miss out on this. It's really great. Getting lots of great feedback on the Patreon. It's the kind of stuff I can't do on Cal Preach that I'm so craving to do and desiring to do, but there's just not the time. This magnifying mirror is something else. Can really, literally, you can see every single lash. I feel like the flaps, the flaps that occur over the, over the eyes, the eyelids, that's troublesome. Just gives away your age really fast. I, I wouldn't consider myself to be somebody who just is always in denial about things at all, but I will say that in my relationship, my marriage, I definitely have put my blinders on in certain areas. I mean, Billy too would admit to that, that we both just kind of have gotten complacent in certain areas of our marriage. And, you know, putting your reality glasses on and seeing things for what they really are sometimes feels like ripping off a Band-Aid, like it really hurts, but you, you know, it hurts for a moment and then you put the glasses on and you're like, oh, okay, reality is actually better than being blind because you see things for what they really are and you don't feel as, First of all, it brings more intimacy and more connection because you're being real with where things are really at. And secondly, it just feels like when I'm in denial about things and I'm kind of pretending, but yet I don't even realize I'm doing it, I'm suspended. I'm like walking on a tightrope. And then when I finally put the glasses on and come down, I'm like, oh, I didn't even realize how suspended I was. I didn't realize how out of touch with my own reality <laughs> I actually was until I put my, my glasses on, but it feels good. I mean, it's super scary sometimes to look at your reality in any relationship, relationship with your children, your mother, your father, your husband, you know, a friend, but I guess it's all God's timing too. When, when God's really challenging you and saying, okay, it's time for you to look at this. It's scary, but it's liberating. Hey guys, we're in the car and we're headed to the venue right now. We're just warming up in here. We're singing a little blue Bayou. I said a one, oh, a two. <laughs> rock and roll intro. Uh, count us in, Karen. One, two, three. I'm going back someday. Come with me to Blue Bayou. Where the folks 
lots of fun and the world is mine on blue bayou that familiar sunrise the sleepy eyes how happy i'd be well guys it's gonna be a great show these are the loves of my life these girls literally my oldest friends in the entire world and we're born to sing together born to sing together yes, carney's a little camera shy but she loves you all so That's much true. <laughs> i'm not camera shy you're not camera shy since when i know oh, since oh, when yes. say hi cal preach hi hi cal preach followers hey robbie yes hi you're very handsome robbie oh my god you're too you're too kind <laughs> hi everybody yeah, that's her love. That's her husband. That's my love. Do you love him? I love him. Yes, you do. I love him very much. Yes, you do. All right, guys. Over and out. Bye. And uh, I'll check in with you after the show. Is you Sweet home, guys. I can't believe it. Space Kitty? Yes, my little angel. You come say hello to Mama. Did you miss Mommy more than anything in the whole wide world, Whiskers? Give Mommy the kitty love. Space Kitty love. The bells are going off right now, guys. Listen to those bells. Can you hear it? You know, I worry about my children. Literally, it takes up so much of my mental real estate, I can't even tell you. I'm thinking about my kids and are they okay? Are they in a bad place? Are they lying to me when they say they're fine? You know, I don't, I don't even know what to say about that. I just need to get that off my chest. I worry about my children. It's, it's, it's unhealthy. It's toxic. It, it's not helping me or my kids. And I should win some sort of degree or something in worrying about your kids because literally nobody does it better than me. Nobody does it better. If you don't have children, it's difficult to, to relate a little bit because, well, you don't have kids, but it's also difficult to identify because it's like you have three hearts living outside of your body. However many kids you have is how many hearts you have living outside of your body. Amen. Done, end of story, peace out. That is the truth. I would compare it to, you know, like having a nosebleed that will never, never stop, no matter how many tissues you use. <laughs> it's the most disgusting analogy I've ever heard in my life, forgive me. But look where I am, guys. <gasps> Ooh, Pokey, it's heaven here. Darling, come on, don't you want to go down the path? Darling, darling. You know, the path is the best part, Pokey. It really is. I don't know why you don't like going down there. Listen, darlings, make it a fabulous day and know that the Lord loves you. Peace of Christ. Hey friends, if this video blessed you in any way, I pray that you will subscribe and that you will press that little bell because that little bell will give you an alert every single time there's a brand new Cal Preach. And remember, sharing is caring. You never know who's gonna find the peace of Christ.